to five. Ease the bomb. Mark the start wheel on, sir. All set, number one. Yeah, it's ready to go, sir. Midships. Midships. Wheels, midships, sir. Have you managed to stay awake for the fueling? I was back on board before both watches and driven to the ship by her husband. Steer 258. Two, you know her husband commands the Phantom Squadron. Yeah, and they'll be attacking us on eight. Thursday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Dummy attack, sir. You hope. If he noticed the way you were attacking his wife, you could be knocked off this bridge with a three-inch rocket. Revolution 6-4. Six, Revolution 6-4. Perfectly safe. Six, they'll have left Jib by the time we're back. Only here for the exercise. Oxhall, put a shot man on that beating. Seen the signal, have you, about our going into jib at the end of next month? Are you fitted with that submarine detection device, clockwork duck or whatever? Saturn Delta. Yes, we're now officially designated trial ship. Ah, uh, that should be fun. If it works. At least it can keep your mind on sea bottoms instead of the other kind. Making the final approach now, Master. Very good, sir. Something for it, Master. Did it come from the tanker? You've been so long in getting it, I thought you'd swum ashore personally. Been watching the fueling. I nearly joined an all fleet once. Can't think of a more suicidal combination. Much mail? Yeah, postman said it's nearly all official. Seven for the commanding officer HMS Hero. Five for the supply officer HMS Hero. One for petty officer right of Willows. And one passionate one for right of Parkins. Oh, I hope there's nothing too difficult in this lot. I want to get some studying in today. I wish I'd started when I was your age. Well, you've got all your qualifications now, haven't you? All I need for promotion, perhaps. I fancy being an officer myself. More interested in being a dad. Not long to go now, is there? Yeah, about five weeks if he's on time. And being a Parkins, he'll probably be a drift for his first birthday. Yeah. Here, you don't fancy flogging me that old banger of yours, do you? Mrs. Rankin should have a car for getting to the hospital. My banger? <laughs> My missus only uses it when she needs some exercise. Like pushing it. <laughs> Here, log that in and start a secret file. Saturn Delta. Raffy thermal layers. Differences in sea temperatures at different depths. Ben's sonar signals. Sounds painful. Fancy cup of tea? 
If it doesn't take you a day and a half to get it. Uh, two fellas. Uh, two lumps in mine, please, Parkins. I haven't got a car you'd like to sell me, sir. I uh, have too much regard for the British road user to let you anywhere near one. Revolution 6 4. You have the ship. Yes, Steady on 230. 12 knots. Sir? Uh, 4 knots special CD. The laundry account, have you, Pierre? Uh, really must get myself organized. Sure you haven't seen it? Anything wrong, Pierre? Hey. Oh, it's, it's from my mother. My wife's ill. Nothing serious, I hope. It's bad enough, sir. Could you ask the captain to signal welfare? I think I'll have to go home. Come in, Pierre. Sit down. I'm sorry to hear about this. Thank you, sir. If, well, if welfare can that there is a problem at home, we'll uh, put you ashore on the helicopter. You can get the first flight to England. Well, if I do go, I'll get back as soon as I can, sir. You get back when you've got your wife on an even keel. You're no use to me for sitting here worrying about her. If you need an extension, apply for it. Well, she's fine, normally, sir. She had this trouble the last time you were in a ship. Yes, sir. That was five years ago when I was in HMS Zephyr. I've had two shore jobs in between. She's been great. It doesn't happen often. Well, two absences in five years don't make you a liability to the service. Agree? Yes, sir. Very well, then. We'll miss you, but we'll manage, so don't worry about the ship. Thank you, sir. Hello, Mum. Oh, I'm so glad you're back. You're looking well. Oh, you don't look too bad yourself. <laughs> Have you been coping all right? Oh, not too bad. Where's Angie? Upstairs in bed. She's having one of her turns. Oh, oh wait a minute. You can take some tea up to her. She's really done it this time, you know. You were right to write to me. She's less sense than those kids she teaches and their infants. Oh, don't be too hard on her, Mum. She told them at the school that you've been promoted. They think you're a commander now. And she told the neighbours that her parents had given her a thousand pounds. Her parents? Oh, they couldn't. Oh, yes, the dishwasher. Didn't know about that when I wrote. It arrived yesterday. No bill yet, but it's bound to be expensive. Oh, I can see that. No wonder you were worried. Worried? I could have murdered the little minx when I found those bills. And why is your bank account sent here? You should ask for it to go to the ship. Well, I thought she was over all this. What the hell's that? Oh, a new automatic. Oh. Jeff, she'll never change, you know. I warned you, a pretty face All right, me. Mum. I've heard it all before. And I'm married to Angie, not you. Oh. You didn't tell me it was in real leather. Oh, nothing but the best for our Angie. It's 423 pounds. Oh, yes, that's your colour TV. And did you see the car? Bought the day after the neighbours got a new convertible. I'm telling you, Jeff, the sooner you stop... Look, Mum, I must go up and see her. Uh, uh, Jeff. Uh, 
Can I cook you something? Uh, oh, no thanks. I had something on the plane. Oh. Oh, well, I'll clear up here then and get off home. Ring me up if you need anything. Thanks, Mum. Hello. Mum made you some tea. She's been horrible to me. Oh, well, she's only trying to be helpful. Oh, oh it's so good to have you home. Oh, let's have a look at you. How are you? I'm fine. What did the doctor say? I haven't been to a doctor. What? Why not? You've got to see a doctor, Angie. I'm not ill. But a doctor could help you, Angie. You must see no. that. No. But you've been telling lies again, and you've got me into terrible debt. Well, I don't know how it happens. Do you? Does your precious mother? No. But then we're not doctors, are we? That's why you must see one. If you'd gone to see a doctor last time, it was really bad. You would have been over all this by now. It will be the end of us. The doctors would contact Naval Welfare, and before you knew it, there'd be a note in your file saying you married unsuitably. They'd never promote you. That's nonsense. No, it isn't. I know them. I know them too, darling. Oh, there's Mum off now. Oh, good. I can get up now. Anyway, I may not get promotion. I'm only a candidate for officer. There's no guarantee I'm going to get it. I'm the only thing that can stop you. I was just thinking this morning you'd be better off without me. Oh, don't be silly, darling. I love you. And that's more important to me than getting a stripe on my arm. If I don't make officer, I'll make chief. We can still have a good life. A good life? As soon as you're well again. You can't have a good life without money. I've tried to give us a good life and look what's happened. It was bad enough last time, but now it's worse we've got the bank loan. Well, I earn a bit more than I did five years ago. It's going to be tough, but we'll manage. Oh, how can we? Your mother says we've had it. Oh, Jeff, why did you have to move here? Why couldn't she have stayed in Portsmouth? Well, she came here to look after you. Anyway, let's take stock. What? I know about the car, the dishwasher, the three-piece suite, and the... Oh, yeah. And the dishwasher. They're all on HP. Yes, and the spin dryer. Yeah. And what else was there? Oh, some clothes. I paid for them by check. Clothes? What clothes? A garden party outfit. A garden pot? But what do you want that for? Well, it was that snooty bitch Diana. Oh, your headmistress, Diana Masterson. Her husband has been in the papers, presented to Prince Philip at some conference. She was absolutely insufferable about it. So what? Well, so I told her that we'd been invited to the palace, to a garden party. Mm. And I asked her to come with me to help buy the outfit. Well, you're as good as he is. Oh. Oh, well, we can't do anything about the clothes. We'll have to sell all the other stuff. We'll lose money on the car, mostly, but it'll all have to go. Not the car. You can't. Angie. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, we'll put the house on the market and we'll move back into married quarters. Oh, no! Yes. When we bought this place, we said that we would go without luxuries. Sit on packing cases, if necessary. I know, but... Well, it was the only way we could afford the mortgage, remember? Well, we can't afford it now. I'm not giving up my house. Yes, you are. Oh, Jeff, I'm not living on a patch with petty officers' wives. You are a petty officer's wife. Don't come the command a bit with me. I hate married quarters. It'll help you, Angie. You won't have to keep up with class-conscious neighbours. Oh, what a mess. If only you'd been here to help me. Well, I'm here now. But you need a doctor more than I you don't. need me. I don't. I don't need a doctor. You're seeing one, Angie, and that's the end of it. Now, that dishwasher, how much? Oh. Oh, I'm fed up. Yes? Petty Officer Writer Willows. That's right. Oh, my name's Spooner, Commander Spooner, Directorate of Naval Security, Ministry of Defense. How do you do? Oh. May I come in? Oh, yes. I won't keep you long. Uh, through here? Thank you. Oh, how very nice. Your wife not about? 
Oh, she's upstairs in bed. She's not feeling very oh, well. Oh, yes, of course. That's why you were sent home from HMS Hero, wasn't it? She's better now, I hope. Uh, yes, thank you, sir. Good, good. Well, may I sit? Oh, sorry to drop in like this as soon as you've arrived. Um, could you tell me what this is all about, sir? Isn't there a question that you ought to be asking me before that, Petty Officer? Sir? Oh, come along, man. I'm a security officer. You might at least go through the motions of asking for my identity card. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I'm not thinking very straight today. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah. You'd be surprised how many chaps forget to ask for identification. Sir, hmm? uh, may I ask... Oh, why am I here? Don't worry. Just a new bee in my director's bonnet. After care of positively vetted personnel. Now, you were vetted in your last job, weren't you? On C&C staff. Oh, that's right, sir. About two years ago. Yeah. Well, it's a very big job, as you can imagine. You were one of the chaps on my, on my list, and so uh, when I saw your name on a flight signal, I thought I'd just pop in. Oh, would you like some coffee? No, thank you. The two people who acted as referees for your vetting, are you still in touch with them? Well, only now and again. I mean, it's very difficult to keep in touch when you change jobs every two years. Uh, no, thank you. Yes, I agree. I had a stroppy young lieutenant last year who said the only two beings who knew him as intimately as we required were God and the devil. So he put them down on his form as referees. <laughs> anyway, we're supposed to be talking about you, aren't we? How are things generally? Any problems? None, sir. Hmm. You haven't been pinching the cash out of the main safe on board, eh? <laughs> no, not this week, sir. There wasn't enough in it. I was just wondering when I saw that new and rather smart card in your garage. Oh, yes. Well, we've been saving up for it, sir. We thought we'd get a new car before any kids arrived. After that, it'll be back to old bangers. I see. You've no children. Oh, I thought that perhaps that new and expensive spin dryer was for nappies. Sir? Where's the money coming from, Willows? Oh, that's my affair. No, 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 it's a security affair. What? Well, you're in debt up to your eyeballs, man. You're also a petty officer writer with access to highly classified correspondence and uh, personnel files, including details of pay accounts. Well, I'm no security risk. I never will oh, be. Oh, yes, you are. Right now. I mean, how can you possibly get yourself out of debt? Well, I haven't had much time. It didn't take much time to get into debt, did it? Talk about going berserk in the local supermarket. Exactly who do you mean? Is there an epidemic of it around here? Look, my wife is ill, and I think I ought to be given enough time to sort things out before naval security come hammering on the door. Who's your wife's doctor? Well, she hasn't got a doctor yet. I'm going to fix that and my financial problems. Oh, are you going to rob a bank? Or have you got a printing press in your basement? Look, sir, I'll concede that my being in debt may be your business, but how I get out of it is my own. Would that it were, Willows. But I'm afraid if you can't convince me, I shall have to recommend withdrawal of your clearances. All your clearances. But you can't do that. I'd have to. Oh, you'd get them back again, of course, once you could prove that you were solvent again, but... Well, in the meantime... I'd have my career messed up. Yes, well, we'd have to notify HMS Hero. That could mean the end of your sea job. Not good for a career-minded man. All right. If you must know, we're going to sell the house. Drastic measures. Necessary measures. There's nothing else I can do. Except what you did last time. Eh? In 1968. 1968? So I got married. True. And soon after you got married, you went to see an HMS Zephyr. First time you'd ever been separated from your bride. And while you were defending queen and country, your wife did a bit of shopping then, didn't she? Well, that was a long time ago. Was well, she ill then, too? And as you know, I was positively vetted and cleared since then. Yes, well, no system's foolproof the first time around. What does that mean? It means that last time you weren't asked how you cleared those debts. I flew home and sorted them out. How? Well, I cleared my debts. That's all that matters. Two thousand pounds? I'm sorry, Willows. I want to know how you did it. I gambled. Go on. Well, I took what money I had left and put it on the horses. I was lucky. I won. I, I made enough to clear us. They must have been very big wins. Which bookies did you use? Well, it was mostly course betting. Yes, and I don't suppose you can remember the names of any of the horses that did so well for you. Well, as it happens, I can. Good heavens. Mind telling me? Well, I did Sir Ivor in the Derby and the 2,000 Guineas. It won both times with Leicester Pickett up. 
I backed Piggott again in the St. Ledger. He won on Ribeiro at 100 to 30. You can check it if you like. No, I don't think I'll bother. A speech that well rehearsed is bound to be accurate. Doesn't prove anything, though, does it? You can't disprove it. Who knows? We don't have to disprove anything. We know how you got out of debt in 1968. You offered your services to the KGB. <laughs> the Russians? Oh, that's ridiculous. Come along, man. You were a leading writer, newly married and broke, renting an expensive flat in Southsea for your blushing bride. What else could you possibly sell? I won on the horses, I've told you. And prove I didn't. Prove that you did. I can't. Precisely. Just the name of your contact would do to begin with. I had no contact. Oh, what did you do then? Take a stroll to the nearest dead letter box listen, every Sunday. Listen, I'm telling you. I heard voices and I thought it was one of my neighbours. Hello, Mrs. Willows. What do you do? I'm Dick Spooner from the Ministry of Defence. I'm a friend of Mark Niles in HMS Hero. I promised him I'd just pop in and see that everything was all right. Commander Niles, the captain? Yes, yes, we're old friends. Do you know him? No, not yet. Well, Jeff's only been in Hero for five months. We hope to have the captain here to dinner one night, though, when the ship comes home, don't we, darling? Perhaps you could come too. Yes, yes, I would enjoy that. I do hope that you're feeling better now. Angie, you shouldn't be up. Have you been offered tea? Yes, thank you. Um, don't let me keep you from your rest, Mrs. Willows. Oh, well, I'll say goodbye for now then. Au revoir. How's the memory coming, Willows? I'm telling you, I never spied for the Russians. And where did the money come from in 1968? I've told you. Yes, but you're lying. Offer some material, but not bright enough to know what to do next. It's very sad. Okay. I've had enough, sir. Get out. Is that wise? Yes, I've got more to do than to sit here and listen to a load of wild accusations from you. If you want to charge me with spying, go and get the law and I'll get my solicitor. Yes, well, I don't really want to do that. No, because you haven't got a leg to stand on. You can't charge me with spying because I've never spied. Then tell me where the money came from. I'll tell you nothing. I'll tell you what I will do. I'll give you one minute to get out of this house. And if you don't, I'll forget that you're an officer and I'll throw you out. And now, shall we stop playing games? Sit down. Get out. Sit down! There's something in here that I think you should see. Are you going to get out, or am I going to have to throw you? His name's Liberman. He was your initial contact for the money in 1968. And just in case you don't recognize the background, it's Cape Town. How's your memory now? We know him well, of course. He's one of the top KGB men in South Africa. He's not KGB. He's... Yes, you're right, of course. He's not KGB. He's a diamond smuggler. One of the biggest in the world. Tell me about it. I've nothing to say, sir. Willows, I could have ran that photograph down your throat five minutes after I got here. The reason I didn't was because I wanted to prove to you that I can make a hell of a mess of your life. I can put a question mark the size of Nelson's column by your record. After that, they wouldn't let you sweep leaves in a barrack square, and you know it. Well, if I do tell you, I'll, I'll be marked down by security. Not necessarily. If you help me, I'll do nothing about suspending your clearances. Well, then I'll be on a smuggling charge in a stretch in prison. Well, then I recommend that the smuggling business is dropped in the light of your willingness to give evidence. Why is this so vital? Are you going to talk? Or shall I arrange for your kit to be sent home from HMS Hero? Listen. We were nearly £2,000 in debt. I didn't know what to do. Apart from settling Angie, there was nothing I could do. So I flew back to the ship, rejoined in Simonstown, South Africa. How did you get to hear about the diamond? Oh, there was some chat about it on the mess deck. Somebody said there was a lot of money in it. And we were on our way home. So I talked to somebody who put me on to somebody else and so on. Until you got to Liverpool? 
Yeah. He gave me the diamonds, and I brought them home in the ship. After a couple of weeks, when the customs were concentrating on new arrivals, I took them out. How? I wrote myself a chit, authorizing me to take all official mail to Commander-in-Chief's offices in Northwood. I put the diamonds in an envelope, marked them with the ship's stamp, took them out of the yard. Instead of going to the offices in Northwood, I went to an address in London where they paid me exactly £2,000. Did you ever see the diamonds? Well, no. They were in a sealed package. Then how did you know that you were carrying diamonds? Well, they were... They were from South Africa and Liberman was in diamonds. He was also in drugs. You were carrying heroin. Oh, no. No, I wouldn't do a thing like that. Not knowingly. Oh, I believe you. We'll call them diamonds in your statement. Now, if you'd like to start writing. Sir? Well, write it all down. Names, dates, places. Everything you can remember. Enough for the police to check on. Give them a case. Against me? No, no, no. Against Liberman. You're a very small fish in this pond. Now, get yourself some paper and a pen. Look, sir, I can't see the point in writing it all down. I've told you everything. I need evidence, details, facts. Then it's five years old. Start writing, petty officer. Just one other thing. It would be very stupid to put down the wrong information. Now sign it and date it. You heard me. I may be signing myself into prison. Would you please sign your statement, petty officer? Thank you. I shall have to check this, of course. In the meantime, you just carry on getting yourself out of debt. Look, they've no idea in the ship that I'm in debt. I hope I'm clear before I come in contact with security again. Yes, I hope so too. I'd hate one of my colleagues to do you after all this. And the, uh, the smuggling charge? Well, if your statement is true... It is, all of it. But then it'll count in your favour. If I can persuade them to keep this within security, there's no reason why your ship or your promotion board should ever know about it. Well, listen, will I hear from you? Yes, I'll be in touch in two or three days. In the meantime, as they say in other circumstances, um, don't try to leave town. Gee, when are you going to learn? You must come to dinner. He's a commander. He knows darn well we don't dine ship's captains. Well, there's no reason why we shouldn't. We shall when you're an officer. If I ever become an officer. And if I ever make enough money to afford a decent meal. Well, you'll be all right for meals, won't you? You'll escape back to your ship. I'm the one who's going to have to start. You might as well know we're in trouble. Oh, I know, but... Well, maybe I will go and see a doctor this time. If I you mean be... big trouble, Angie. I didn't have any betting wins back in South Sea in 68. I got us out of debt by smuggling. And Spooner knows it. He's from security. You idiot. How could you? How could I? I didn't buy up half of Hampshire. I only had to pay for it. Now it's half of Kent. God, what's going to happen? Oh, I don't know. He's going to try and get me off the hook. Why should he? Well, he needs my evidence. I hope they don't hear about it back in the ship. If they do, I'm for the bullet. Aircraft!
You've been up top to wave to your aviator friend? Ah, drop dead pasta. Just because you're awake in the afternoon for the first time, Miss Commission. How can I sleep when you fishheads keep banging off with guns? Anyone would think we're at war. Ah, don't worry. If we ever do go to war, I'll give you a shake. Only if it's in working hours. Oh, well on, sir. Oh, did you see them phantoms? No, there's more to do than watch a bunch of airy fairies trying to justify their flying pay. Mm. And so should you with P.O. Willows away. Uh, there aren't any cash account vouchers in there, sir. If uh, that's what you're looking for. How'd you guess? You know, I still can't find that damn laundry account. I'm sure P.O. Willows had it, but it's not in the stuff he left for me. It might be in the top drawer, sir. He sometimes puts things in there for safekeeping. Locked. Spare keys in the bottom drawer, sir, in a tobacco tin. Only, I'm not supposed to know that. I won't tell if you'll get after left hand last for the sports bills. Right, sir. and opened it. It's a bank statement. Willows is deep in the red. Uh, so am I. Banks are for lending money. Sure, but his is bright red. So I went through the rest of the drawer. There's two letters from business firms to his wife about getting behind on HP payments. One of them's for a car. Purchase price plus extras. Just over a thousand quid. Oh, I can't believe it, not Willows. Well, I didn't want to believe it either, but there's the proof. And it twitches me rigid. I mean, he's handling public money. Well, hell with your public money. What about security? Well, you're the ship's security officer. And you're the man's divisional officer. You see Willows as a security risk. No. I may be biased, but he's one of the best senior ratings in my department. Yes, he is. I suppose we ought to give him a chance to explain himself. Speak his piece before we jump on him. I want to talk to him as soon as he gets back. I'll be happy with that. I won't worry the captain with it until I've seen him. Thanks, Derek. Oh. By the way, halfway through all this, I suddenly remembered I'd shoved the laundry voucher in the postal account so I wouldn't lose it. <laughs> What's up? That's the last time I go out with your mother. Well, it was good of her to go with you, Angie. You know you were nervous of seeing the... Uh, the psychiatrist? With your mother, anybody could be forced into a nervous breakdown. Well, calm down. What happened? We went in my car. Yeah? And on the way home, she said if it would be a help to us, she would give us a good price for the dishwasher. Old rat bag. But we need a good price for the dishwasher and anything else come to that. It's worse than I thought. What about that mail order catalogue stuff and none of it's paid? Those were essentials. Look, I'm talking about your mother. She's enjoying it, rubbing my nose in it. And I'm talking about our finances. So what's new? Look, we're in a bloody mess and if we've got to crawl to get out of it, we'll crawl. And if my mother wants to be charitable, we'll accept. We've got to accept. I'm not going back to that psychiatrist. Why not? He's an idiot. Look, you've only been to him once. Give him a chance. He's an idiot. If he wasn't, he wouldn't be National Health. Well, what are you saying? That we send you to Harley Street? Well? I wouldn't trust you in London. You'd buy up half the King's Road. Oh, go back to your silly little ship and leave me alone. When I think of all the other men I could have married, men who would have been able to look after me properly. Where are you going? For a walk. Oh. All right. Oh. Hello, old chap. I'm coming. Thank you. I'm going. Well, sit down. You pay the rent. Oh, uh, wrong thing to say, maybe. Hmm? Oh, do sit down. You're giving me a stiff neck. Well, you've certainly got a good memory. Except that you made the delivery on the Wednesday, not the Thursday. Uh, the, uh, sir, hmm? will there be any further action? Oh, I can't see any reason why there should be. Can you? Hmm? Oh. <laughs> How's your wife? 
Oh, she's not too bad. She's been to see a psychiatrist. Good, good. Pity these things take such a long time, isn't it? I suppose the only way you could really speed things up would be to get her to one of the really top men. Well, that's what Angie thinks too, but top men cost money. And we can't afford it. Yes, quite. Well, I'm afraid I can't help you there. There are no uh, trick cyclists on my Christmas card list. <laughs> <laughs> You've done enough for us, thanks, sir. Uh, there is a small favour you could do me. Sir? I believe your ship's being fitted uh, with a new submarine detection device. Um, what's it called now? Uh, uh, Saturn Delta? That's right. Oh, you know about it, do you? So there has been some correspondence on it, then? Yeah, just before I left. Good, good. Well, I'd like you to get me copies of that and also any other documents on it that may come your way. I'm sorry, sir. I don't understand. Oh, come along, Willows. I have here your signed confession to smuggling. Now, you'd like me to keep quiet about that. I'd like some details of Saturn Delta. Seems like a perfectly fair exchange to me. Is this some sort of test? A business, as far as I'm concerned. Who are you? I'm Richard Spooner. Commander Spooner? Oh, I see. The identity card. Well, you can check the Navy list if it'll help. There's no Commander Spooner in naval security. Are you saying Comrade Spooner? Oh, I say that's very good. I must remember that. Oh, no. No, I won't do it. I won't spy. Oh, dear, won't you? That's going to cost me quite a bit in postage. What? Uh, sending your confession to the uh, local chief constable, uh, your captain in HMS Hero, and the director of naval security. I've got lots of copies. Well, so what? I'm not spying. What a pity. What are your neighbours going to say when you get carted off to prison? You bastard. Oh, come along now. Don't be rude. That's almost like biting the hand that's going to feed you. What does that mean? Well, you'll have to do this little um, assignment for nothing, of course. Sort of act of faith. But after that, I see no reason why we shouldn't pay you the going rate. It might even mean you could take down that for sale sign in your garden. Now you're out of your mind. Don't be so hasty. I haven't told you what the going rate is yet. I don't care what the rate is. One thousand pounds an assignment. Yes. It's not bad, is it? Of course, that is the top rate. But then uh, your potential's unlimited. A commissioned writer... Commissioned spy. Agent. Willows. Spy is a derogatory term in our business. Oh, spy, agent, what's the difference? It all adds up to the same thing, traitor. And I'm no red. Better red than dead. And that's what you could be. You're bluffing. You wouldn't kill me. Oh, no, 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 not me, Willows. We're friends. I was talking about Liberman and his associates. Well, they've got nothing against me. If I sent them a copy of your signed confession, together with your present address, you could never be sure, could you? Now then, a miniature camera, the instructions are inside. Practice with it and then photograph the Saturn Delta papers. Send the film back to me, post restant to the GPO in the High Street. Oh, and incidentally, the uh, Richard Spooner who will collect it won't ever have met me in his life. And he never will. Now, you go back to your ship on uh, Wednesday, don't you? Well, I was going to ask for an extension of leave. No, I'm sorry, Willows. I'm afraid we need the information as soon as possible. Where is your ship? Gibraltar? You should know. Right. I'll give you exactly eight days from the date of your return to get that film back to me. After that, I shall begin to get nervous. You will. What if I get caught? Angela will become Winchester's prettiest prison visitor. So don't get caught. I should um, go ahead and sell the card, if I were you, and some of the other things, just in case the real security boys start to take an interest in you. But um, hang on to the house for the time being. I might be able to help you there. I can't believe this is happening to me. Funny. They all say that. Angie. Jeff, I'm frightened. You heard? Most of it. What's happened to us? Why did they pick on you? Because they know I've got too much to lose if I don't obey. He 
knew it all, didn't he? Angie. Jeff, you can't do it. You'd get caught. They'd put you away for years and years. Look, ring the police. Oh, I don't know. I don't want to do it. But he's got my confession. And a thousand pounds a job. Stop, stop, stop. Don't think about it. You'd get caught. Or I'd give you away. Well, how long do you think I'd last? Jumping at every knock on the door and worried about every car parked in the street. Look, ring the police now. Oh, excuse my rig, sir. I had a message that you wanted to see me as soon as I arrived. Yes, Pierre. Take a seat. Thank you, sir. I your wife's better? Yes, she is. Thank you, sir. Good. Pierre, I'm sorry to bring this up. Are you in difficulties over money? Sir? Quite by accident, Lieutenant Wakelin discovered uh, a bank statement that some higher purchase letters belonging to you. As a ship security officer, they're of uh, some concern to me. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Well, my wife has been rather ill. She sort of freaked out, spent too much money. Well, uh, there was a new car, for instance. <laughs> well, it's, it's all very embarrassing, sir. But she's seeing a doctor, and we're managing. You're quite sure everything's all right now? Oh, everything. I've taken care of it all. If it wasn't, I would have asked for an extension of leave. Have you seen your bank manager? Twice. And the building society. They've all been very helpful in the circumstances. And you're uh, taking charge of family finances from now on? Oh, yes, sir. I'm opening a separate page in the ship's company ledger for that. All right, Pierre, that's good enough for me. But uh, let me know if there are any difficulties. I will, sir. Thank you very much. Right. Escape, sir. Great what? Escape. Sounds like one of your runs ashore. I don't believe it. That's not the seaman's training report I've been waiting for, is it? No, sir. I'm finishing that tonight. Oh, well, what's that then? Oh, uh, this is about Willow. Ah, I've seen the welfare report on his wife. Oh, uh, this is about his. It was uh, fairly satisfactory. It's about his finances, sir. I thought you ought to know, although he seems to be straightening himself out with his usual efficiency. At once. Hold on. Hello, Jeff. Oh, I'm sorry about that. You, uh, you got a bird in there? Hey, eh? a bird? So, oh, no, I locked the door because I wanted a bit of peace and quiet. First night back after a week of Parkins, they'll all be coming to me with pay queries. Yeah, I got one myself, but it'll keep till morning. Hey, you don't look too good, son. You got a temperature? Oh, uh, I might have picked up a little bug back home in England. Uh, I'm all right. I won't be working late. Right. Well, come up my mess and have a wet when you're finished, if you feel up to it. All right. Ta. Right. Oh, uh, Angela, all right now, is she? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's fine, thanks. Good. Good. Maybe see you later, then. Yeah.
Petty Officer Willows. Right, sir. He's on his way off, sir. Good. Now, why wasn't I told about this when Wakeland first found the letters? Well, sir, I talked to Willows and he's... He is heavily in debt. He's also an extremely reliable senior rating. He was extremely reliable. Well, you recommended for promotion. He's now extremely vulnerable. And if we ignored that and anything went wrong, we'd share his guilt and we'd be hammered for it and rightfully. Come in, Pierre. Good evening, sir. Well, I'm very disturbed indeed to hear about your debts. And even more disturbed to learn that you made light of them to the first lieutenant. Well, I said I was getting out of debt, sir. That's true. I'm selling the car. So we know about the car and all the furniture. What else is there? Well, the others are minor, sir. They can't be minor to you, Willis. You have a bank account that looks like the national debt. Well, I think... And you didn't sort that out on a weekend at home. Well, I think, sir, that... I'm not concerned with what you think. I'm concerned with running an efficient ship. And I've no use for a petty officer writer who's worried by vast private debts. Oh, I'm not worried, sir. Then you damn well should be. If you had been worried and honest and responsible over this thing, I'd have moved heaven and earth to help. Sir. Carry on, Petty Officer Willows. Aye, aye, sir. What do we do, sir? We tell him that we're getting him out of this ship and into a quiet shore billet where he can watch over his wife. Seems a bit hard. Good man. Let's try to keep him that way. Get, get a signal pad. We're going to ruin morning coffee in Whitehall tomorrow. 